Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today we're going to be looking at the Japanese Type 89 50mm mortar round. And these are better known by their more colloquial name, which is the knee mortar round. Uh, if you don't know what a knee mortar is, it was basically a 50mm uh, man portable mortar, which weighed about 10 pounds, that was issued prolifically to Japanese soldiers during World War II. And it was a trigger fired mortar. So you would drop your round in, and this is one of the rounds, and then you would wait until you wanted to fire it. And then you would pull the lanyard and it would fire one of these up to about 2,100 feet. And these are about one pound, 12 ounces of explosive in one of these. So they packed quite a bit of punch and they did a lot of damage to American forces during World War II, causing a lot of casualties. So I'm not really gonna go into the knee mortar itself. There's a whole bunch of really cool explanations of how it got its name and all that kind of stuff. Do yourself a favor, look it up. If you don't know about it, read about it. It's definitely a weapon worth reading about. A lot of American soldiers wanted to have one because they were very handy and very effective actually. But these are the rounds that they would fire. It would also fire, or it could fire, the standard uh, Japanese hand grenade. But uh, we're just going to be looking at the mortar rounds, which were actually designed for it. So this is the 50 millimeter. And you can tell it is a dedicated mortar round because it has this copper driving band. And the uh, knee mortar was actually a rifled mortar. So you would take your round drop it down the tube it would then uh, lock into place essentially and you would have we'll take a look at the component parts here you have your base propelling area with its primer right here which uh, when the lanyard was pulled the firing pin inside the mortar would fire this would uh, trigger uh, basically a propelling charge here which then your copper band would grab onto the rifling in the mortar, sending your grenade body, which is where your explosive is going to be. As you can see, this one is empty. Looks like it was possibly never loaded, but I don't really know what that flaky stuff in there still is. And then it would detonate when your detonator hit a hard surface. To prepare these for firing, you would pull out your pin. So here's your lanyard basically, and your safety pin. I'm not gonna pull the pin on this one, but you'd pull this out, and this would free up your detonator right here, which would obviously go off when it hit a hard surface. And the force, the, the concussive force of firing this would actually disarm the safety mechanism inside here and get your mortar projectile ready for uh, explosion on impact. They made a few different types of these. They made phosphorus. I believe they made phosphorus. They made um, smoke. They made high explosive. When I say phosphorus, I do actually mean incendiary, correct, correcting myself. So these are just standard high explosive. These were used prolifically throughout the war. You do still come across these in uh, collections and they do come up for sale occasionally. They're just a very interesting piece of World War II history and uh, something that a lot of American Marines and other servicemen did not want to be on the receiving end of. And one of the Japanese weapons that probably was more effective um, than a lot of US counterparts, the US really didn't have a portable mortar to this degree so they soldiered on with uh, rifle grenades and i'm sure we'll look at uh, american rifle grenades in a later video but again remember to like and subscribe and thanks for watching